Hi, I'm Chef Alex Retoff, and I'm here to show you some great holiday things that we can do to de-stress in this wonderful holiday season. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back, I'm Chef Alex Retoff. Part of a great holiday is to have a great, wonderful, festive cocktail. And this cocktail that we're making today is a spicy pomegranate, great cocktail, but I can't drink alone. So I gotta bring in my good buddy, Chef Shea. Hey, hey Alex, Shea, good to doing? see you. Thanks for coming in today. No problem. Shea's gonna help us out by making a, um, a really strong, sweet, syrupy, simple syrup with um, just spice with a little bit of ginger. So we're gonna take some ginger root, which is a real fragrant root, used a lot in uh, Indian oh, cooking. Yeah. I'm sorry, we're gonna put that right into our um, simple syrup. And we're gonna take this sugar and water syrup and we're gonna blend it down, cook it down just a little bit till it's all a liquid. And then we'll use that to also embellish what we're doing with our cocktail. This cocktail is really wonderful because we're using pomegranate in lieu of cranberry. Um, pomegranate is a great antioxidant and um, is wonderful, strong flavor, great color. We're going to use fresh squeezed orange juice, fresh squeezed uh, lime, and of course we're going to bring in some pomegranate infused vodka. Now this is one of those dishes, one of those recipes that you can use without vodka so we can have a virgin. I suggest that you also label that so that your guests don't get them mixed up if they're drinking one or the other. So as Shay's making um, a little simple syrup going here, what we're going to do is start to compile our cocktail. To start off with our cocktail, we need to rim the glasses with a little sugar to keep that sweetness going on. So we take a little lime and we'll run it around the rim in order to attach that sugar to the rim. We'll roll it in a little plate full of sugar and there you got, we got a great rim with um, a little bit of sugar to put on our lips for the season. Come on in. And then I'm going to take this and do this one more. And one of the beautiful things about this cocktail is in the stressful times of our season, we can have family in town and this goes great with the family, helps me out, helps them out, and everybody has a chance to relax. To assemble this cocktail, what we're gonna do is take some pomegranate juice, we'll add it into our um, iced pitcher. We'll take some of our simple syrup that's laced with ginger. You can see the ginger that's down in here that makes it nice and strong and fragrant. This gives it a wonderful sweetness and a good syrup to it. We're gonna add some fresh squeezed orange juice some lime juice, and of course, we're gonna add just a hint of vodka, just enough to give it a little flavor. <laughs> All right, we're gonna swirl this around. Now, I do have to tell you, we, there's a great way to garnish this dish, and what we're gonna do is take this wonderful fruit, it's called dragon fruit, and it's a nice fuchsia ring on the outside, and it looks like cookies and cream, or it could be snow on the inside. How about that if you're from the north? So we're gonna take this cocktail, swish it around, get it nice and mixed up in the pitcher. We'll pour it into our glasses. Shay, we gotta right. have one for you. Of course, there we go. I'm gonna garnish it with this nice little wedge. Doesn't that look real festive? It's got a beautiful color, it'll real stand out. And Shay, happy holidays to you. Happy holidays. Oh, that's wonderful. What do you think? It's great. I love it. So stay with us. Be right back. And we're going to show you how to do a wonderful, savory, butternut squash, chorizo, black beans stew that's just going to warm the hearts of everyone in your wonderful family for the season. Stay with us. Welcome back. I'm Chef Alex Retoff, and this, I'm here with my friend Chef Shea. And I promised you that we were going to bring you a wonderful chorizo, 
butternut squash black bean stew that's just gonna warm the hearts of your families. And here it is. So, Chef Shay's got our, um, our pot on, and it's already going, it's good and hot. And we're gonna take some beef stock, some fresh corn, we're gonna use some fresh cilantro, garlic, onions, we're gonna use some sweet red peppers, and I don't like green peppers, so we're gonna use poblano peppers. They have a little bit of a spice to it, a little bit of a bite that adds some great depth to this dish. We're gonna use some black beans, and I have some wonderful beef chorizo made today from the farmer's market, and I'll show you how we work with this. I also have some butternut squash, and I'll show you how we work with this wonderful vegetable. This pretty much like a gourd, and I'll tell you how we cut this up and get it ready for this great, great dish. So the first thing we're going to do is, Shay, we're going to add a little olive oil to our pan. All right. And we're going to get some things sautéing, because we've got to get things moving in this pan and get them soft and, and delicate. And we're going to start off with some onions and some of our peppers. And you can hear that nice sizzle going. And that's what we're looking for in this pan. Okay, because what we want to do is saute, and in French it is a derivative of jump. That's what saute means. So we're going to stir this around a little bit and get it just kind of moving a little bit moist. Oh, and you can already smell those wonderful vegetables, this essence coming out of them. Another thing that we're going to do with this is we're going to take some fresh corn, and we're going to roast it right in your kitchen. You don't have to go anywhere, but right on a burner. So Chef Shane's going to turn on a burner. And he's going to put the cor ear of corn right on the burner with the flame kissing it right there in your own kitchen. And what happens is that corn will caramelize on the outside. So when you cook corn in a pot with water, you dilute the flavor of the corn. When we roast it on your flame, it actually concentrates the flavor of the corn. So we actually make those sugars a little bit stronger versus weaker for this dish. It makes for a great, great dish. So the next thing we really need to work with is Shay's stirring our pot and making sure that we're roasting yeah. our corn, is we're going to take this wonderful butternut squash. And we're going to take the top. And look at that lovely color in the inside, that beautiful orange color. It's a very firm squash. It handles really, really well. And what we're going to do is there's a bell shape in it. And in that bell shape resides all the seeds. OK, and this is how this gourd basically goes on and grows the next year, is through this seed pocket. But what we have in this top part is a wonderful, just a nice large chunks of meat from this wonderful gourd. So I'm going to cut this off and you're going to see this is where all the seeds are. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to slice the outer rim out of this gourd. And I'm going to have to leave just in a wonderful pulp in the inside. When you chop this up and put this in with our stew, it'll keep its consistency because butternut squash has a great firm texture to it. And it's also a little bit sweet and a little bit savory at the same time, and it holds up really, really well. So we can just get rid of this. Right. Thank you, Shay. Yes. And I'm going to make some nice cubes out of this. So I'm going to lay this down. And believe it or not, this does not take long to cook. I'm going to cut it at an angle a little bit, and we're going to put it into our stew, nice little chunks. And I'll bring these over to you, and you can put them off onto our stew. All right. And here we go. I like to do this for our family because this is one of those things that heats, reheats real, real well. Okay? Um, at this point, we're going to add a little bit of garlic in it. Now, is there any, ever such a thing as a little bit of garlic? I go with a big old splash, and when I think that's enough, it just needs a little bit more. How about that? All right, so we got a wonderful chorizo. It comes in the casing. Don't be intimidated by this casing. I want to take it off. So I'm going to take the casing and just do a little slice down through it. And all you do is peel this casing off. And there we have the wonderful just the meat. And we can put that in and saute that with our vegetables. I'm all right. Gonna have. All right. So we can set this aside. We can set this aside. Now, let's take a look at this corn as it grows. And it's popping like popcorn. You can see it just kind of bursting. It's a wonderful thing. And we're condensing those flavors, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. When we finish this corn, which is just about there now, we'll pull it off. And all I'll do is I'll just run my knife down the side and pull it off. And it smells kind of well, almost like popcorn. 
and it just falls right onto my cutting board and it will go right into our dish. Now what I'm doing and I'm sauteing this dish, the beautiful thing of sauteing all this, Shay, if you'll just add that to our dish. No problem. To our stew. Um, we're gonna render down all these wonderful flavors. They're gonna meld together and we're gonna have a great, great stew, be real hearty. It doesn't take long to cook. We're gonna add our black beans in. At this point, everything's kind of working its way around. They're all kind of marrying together inside. How's it look, Chef? Looks great. Great colors. How's it smell? It smells wonderful. That's a little scary, huh? All right, we're going in with a little beef stock, just enough to cover it, because we don't want too much for a stew, or we make a soup. That's just perfect. All right. While he's doing that, I'm going to take a little cilantro. And the way we cut cilantro is we curl it under. And we just take our knife right down through it. And by the way, the beautiful thing about a chef's knife is it's wide. Okay, it's wide so that it can glide onto our fingers like this. Okay? Otherwise, if we put our fingers underneath it, always usually bad things happen. Okay? So we'll try to keep our fingers out from underneath it. We'll chop some of this cilantro nice and fine. Give it a little fine chop. Course is okay for this dish. I like to keep all my herbs, fresh herbs, in water. That way it keeps them just like you would flowers. They keep for about a week that way. Once we get this all chopped and sliced where we need it, we'll go ahead and take this and put this right back into our pot. We'll let these flavors all meld in and work for about 15 or 20 minutes. And then we'll have a great stew that'll be ready and warm the hearts of your families. Now that we had an opportunity to let our stew render, this is my favorite time. This butternut chorizo and corn chowder stew is ready to be plated. Let me bring it over to my cutting board. Oh, it smells absolutely delightful. It's thick, it's hearty. Oh, it looks absolutely scrumptious. Let's go ahead and plate some of this up in a plate. Oh, doesn't that look awesome? Feel that steam coming off. Now look, we're gonna garnish this with Pepitos, and pepitos, these are roasted pepitos, they're a little slightly salted, and they're the inside of the pumpkin seeds. Wonderful garnish for this hearty stew, great fall. We're gonna sprinkle a little bit on top. We're gonna sprinkle a little bit of um, cilantro, a little Parmesan cheese, and we are ready to go with this great dish. And when we come back, we're gonna do another holiday favorite, shrimp scampi, my way. Here we have shrimp scampi my way. It's a wonderful, wonderful dish that we're going to be producing here for you. I've got Chef Shea with me, and we're going to create um, this great dish that you can do very simply, very easily um, with your holiday guests when you don't have a lot of time. You just want to put something together and, and, and really impress them. So this is what we're going to do today. So what I have here is some wonderful pasta that we're going to put this on our, um, our, our, our shrimp scampi on. We're gonna cook it to about seven, eight minutes al dente. We want a little bite to it. We've got some wonderfully large shrimp, because that always goes over well with your, with your guests. I've got pistachios. We've got garlic butter, garlic. We're gonna add into the butter and some um, basil. We're gonna create a compound butter, and that's what Chef Shea's gonna work with now. We're gonna build that. If you'll do that for me, please, put some butter in. A little bit of garlic. The beauty of this dish, too, that makes it really stand out from any other shrimp scampi is that we're going to add some basil to it, and we're going to also add a lots of spinach. So there's a little bit of a healthy twist to this whole thing. So as we add the butter in, we're going to add some um, lots of garlic. We're going to add just a little bit more there, Shay. A little Shea. more than that? Yeah, a little more butter than All that. Right. We're going to take some fresh basil. I like to keep it in the water, so that way we can keep the uh, nice and fresh and spry. We'll put that into our food processor and we'll let it go until it's all combined. And this is called a compound butter. It's just a chef's way of saying we've got multiple ingredients in it. Once this butter is all ready to go, and we can probably just take a rubber spatula and move yeah. that around, we're gonna heat up a saute pan. 
We're going to get it good and hot, and we'll move our um, move over to that, and we'll take our shrimp and put it in. There we go, looking good. We're going to add a little salt, a little black pepper to this, give it a little seasoning, a little zip. And by the way, this butter is a great thing to have around the house. I'll make this in larger batches, and I'll roll it up, put it in the freezer, and um, it'll be in a nice log format. And simply pull it out and make a nice little slice, a little dollop. It goes in wonderful things, okay? I actually make eggs for my little girl with that. So it's a beautiful thing. All right, I think we've got it where we need it. All right. Let's go ahead and fire up our pan because we can move right along and get the shrimp cooking. We got a little flame going underneath our pan. The first thing you want to do is heat your pan up, get it a little bit hot. Then we're going to add a little bit of olive oil to it and our compound butter, and we'll start sauteing and poaching our shrimp. We are going to add a little bit of medium dry sherry to it, and that'll give it a nice burst. It'll just bring it right out. Be great flavor. We're going to add a good bit of butter to this. Shay's doing a great job. Shay and I go way back, cooking together. It's great to have him here on the set. There you go. All right. So we like to pick nice big shrimp because, of course, that's when we're in that festive situation. You want to have a nice big shrimp to show. They, they, um, they saute real nice and pink. Um, they're firm. There's a lot of meat to them. And it's really, really impressive when you put it over some noodles, okay, some pasta. So we're going to take some of this shrimp, put it in our bowl, put it in our hot pan. It's always good to make sure that pan's good and warm before we get it put in there. Right. While we're doing that, I want to show you what we're going to do with these pistachios. So this is my trick with a pistachio because I love pistachios. They've got a great flavor, great texture. And what I look to do is I like to take these big old giant pistachios, put them in a bag, and we're going to break them up just a little bit. This is a technique you can use at home, OK? So what I've got is in a Ziploc bag. We'll take some of the air out of it. And we'll take this um, rolling pin and use it as our little way to break it up. So we'll just kind of give it one of these. We'll break it up nicely. By the way, this is a great way to take out your holiday aggressions. OK, if you're a little fired up, that's when your pistachios are a little bit smaller. All right, we've got our butter ready. Got some shrimp going in. We're going to saute this shrimp until they're nice and pink. And we're going to get so it'll be nice and juicy and they'll be plump. They'll go great over our pasta. We're going to give it just a little bit of salt and pepper. Make sure that they're well seasoned. All right, as our shrimp sautés, we're going to add a little bit more of the butter to it so we can have a nice, wonderful, heavy, beautiful garlic flavor. And uh, you can see I'm just going to add this in. The shrimp is just starting to turn opaque a nice little orange color. They're getting firm. And at this point is when we come on with the spinach. There you go, Alex. Thank you. And just as we're doing that, I want to put a little sherry in it. So I'll take a little bit of sherry, just about an ounce or two. Put that in. Oh, it smells absolutely wonderful. The garlic is coming out. You can smell the basil. The shrimp is looking wonderful. So we're just going to take some of this spinach, put it right down in the middle. We're just going to press it in. And as we press it in, this spinach will wilt all on its own. And we start from the outside and pull the shrimp over on into the inside. And at this point, you're going to see it all meld in together. This, this, this um, spinach will actually render down to actually next to nothing. You'll see that it'll all just kind of disappear and melt down. Doesn't that look wonderful? And I guarantee your family and friends are going to love this dish. It's got great garlic. That basil shines through. And we're going to finish this off with a little bit of pasta, fresh pasta, and garnish it with those pistachios. And it's going to have a nice little crunch to it. At the same time, wonderful garlic and basil flavor. So, Shay. Yes. What we're going to need to do next is just give me a little bit of that uh, pistachios that we broke it, broke up. And we'll sprinkle that on top. There you go. You want half of it, all of yeah, it? Yeah, you can give me about half of that in there right now. Oh, that looks, that looks wonderful. There you go. All right. They get a little, soak them in a little bit of that garlic butter. 
and we are looking just about right. there. As my shrimp scampi my way got a chance to render down and meld the flavors in, um, the pasta began to absorb a little bit of that wonderful liquid down there. Um, we're going to plate this up. And I am extraordinarily fortunate and honored to have a guest sampler with us today, Joshua, Chef Joshua John Russell, who's a Food Network competitor, come in and help sample this with me. What's going Thank on, Chef? Thank you. Welcome. You? Yeah, good to see you. Great to have what you What we got today. here? So we got a little shrimp scampi my way, a little bit different Your twist way. on the shrimp scampi. All right. We're going to put some in our bowl, kind of twist it around. All right. Got some great big shrimp in here, some garlic, some basil, mm. some spinach. And so what I'm going to do is garnish that with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Of course. Of course. A lot of Parmesan a lot of, cheese. Of, that works for you. <laughs> and a little bit of pistachio, which pistachio. is already in. And hey, let's give this a try and see how this works for the holiday. Thank you. You want me to go first? I want you to go first, absolutely. Pistachios. Pistachios give it a nice little crunch. It should be pretty hot. How That's are we good. doing, Chef? Is that going to work? Good. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. Oh, mm. that is wonderful. My, oh my. Now, Chef Joshua Jean, mm -hmm. you want to stick around for this dessert I'm about to do because it's going to knock your socks off. So stick around. You want to see what's coming up next. All right, it's dessert time. My favorite time of the a meal. Okay, we are gonna make an awesome tort that is made out of walnuts and coconut macaroons and some cognac fruits with some chocolate embedded in it. Oh man, we're gonna have some fun with that. Look, to start out with, I gotta have coconut macaroons, which is a great cookie made with deep, rich coconut. I'm gonna have um, a little bit of walnuts. I've got some for the fruits that we're gonna actually soak in cognac is going to be apricots, we're going to do yellow raisins, we're going to do um, cherries, and these are going to all meld in with our wonderful um, cognac, and then we're going to make a little bit of a, um, with some brown sugar, eggs, and then our crushed walnuts are all going to make and blend into that filling. Can we start? So what I'm going to start out with here is I've got a pan, and I'm going to take a little bit of a, uh, a towel, a little bit of butter in the towel. This is a little trick to butter your pan. So we're going to take our tart pan and we're just going to butter it all the way around, okay? And make a nice liberal amount of butter on this pan, get it all the corners, and then we're done. We're going to take these coconut macaroons and I'm going to break them up, crumble them up, and they're just sweet and sticky and gorgeous and fluffy at the same time, and they make the great dough. All right, and I'm going to take some walnuts in here, and I'm going to take, uh, they're crushed, we're going to toss them about, get them all mixed up, and they go right into the pan. And all we do is we just press them into the corner of the pan. And then we bake this at about 350 for about 15 to 20 minutes until it makes a nice little crust on the inside. This is an awesome crust, and we're going to make a nice little um, batter to go inside with our fruits. While this is um, baking, we'll take our fruits. We'll chop them up, and here, I'll show you, we just put this right in the oven, just like this. We're going to give it a nice 20 minutes. Now, this is where the fun begins. We take some fruits, we're going to chop them up, nice coarse chop, okay? A few more of these apricots, they're absolutely lovely, they're sweet, and we're going to add these in with the cognacs. I've got already some, some uh, yellow raisins, we're going to keep those moving. I've got some cherries that are already pretty good. I'm going to put them in a bowl. Watch this. We're going to put these in a bowl. We don't have to do anything with those wonderful cherries. They've got just packed full of flavor. Absolutely delightful. You can't have enough of these cherries. I take some good cognac. And I won't cook with any cognac that I won't drink. All part of the holiday season. By the way, this is great by the fire. Obviously, with cognac in it, we're just going to bring these to life, okay? We'll let them sit there. We'll set the bowl aside for just a minute or two, and we'll make our batter. 
To make the batter, we're going to use a, a, a processor, food processor. I'm going to take two eggs. We crack them on the side. That way we get no shells in it. And we're going to take some brown sugar, about a cup and a half, two cups of brown sugar. And we're going to take a little bit of flour. We're going to add that to it. Not much flour. As you can see, there's not much flour in this dish. And a little bit of vanilla. Give it some wonderful aroma. We're going to put this on and just blend it. There we go. When all else fails, just give it a twist. We're going to blend this really nicely. And this is going to melt in all these flavors, make a nice dark brown batter. At this time, we also have these wonderful Belgian chocolate chips. Okay, they're as big as quarters. And I love chocolate. It makes for a great holiday season. And um, it just kind of warms the soul. And now, of course, chocolate has some real medicinal pieces to it, right? We all know how good it is for us. So I've got this. Some people say in this particular recipe um, that we take this and we take the um, cognac out from our fruits. Frankly, I like to leave it right in there. Makes it for an even more festive, festive dish. Gives it a little bit more bite to it, a little bit more fun. Some of it cooks out, some of it doesn't. So we'll add this all to it. And I'm going to add the chocolate in. Right on in. And we're going to mix this all up. Oh, doesn't that look great? And this is the filling for our tort. As you can see, this is very simple, very easy. The theme of what we're doing here today is to show you easy things to do that don't take a lot of time, that are absolutely wonderful for the family and for all your friends that can come over. So what I do next is I'll reach in, grab our pan out. It's not too hot. And I'm going to add this batter right on in. And you can see, we'll just spread it about. It is, oh, it smells glorious, just the crust itself. And we'll spread this out. And it'll go back in the oven for 40 to 50 minutes until everything melds right in. This will all blend together and come out in a gorgeous little tort that we can then serve to our families. I'm going right back in the oven. See how easy this is? And when we come out of the oven, this is exactly what it looks like. It's absolutely brown, golden. The fruits are coming through, and it's got a great ring around it. Absolutely special. And what I'm going to do is take a little bit of powdered sugar and finish this off. Oh, doesn't that look lovely? Right in the middle. We're going to take a little cut of this. Let's see how this comes out. Oh, it's just soft. Oh, it just looks great. It's kind of sticking to my knife, but that's just fine. And let's see what we can do. Oh, doesn't that look lovely? Look at how wonderful that is. Got a little plate here, and I think we need to actually put a... Now that's a little bit big for me. I think we need to give this a try, don't you? Oh, that chocolate's all melting. Oh, it's warm. The fruits come right out. Oh, good Lord, that's wonderful. Oh, that's all there is to it, folks. I'm Chef Alex Retoff. Have a happy holiday season and enjoy cooking. <laughs>